Uh, as you see from my code, my implementation is very browser specific because I'm using this uh, Mozilla prefix over here that targets the Mozilla browser only. So it's not going to work in Safari or Chrome or Internet Explorer unless I um, use their browser specific prefixes. Um, looking over at the keyframe animation syntax on CSS tricks, I see that we have a couple of, well, at least three different ones that are widely supported. We have the at web, uh, at web kit, at Mozilla, and at MS. I believe there's also now there's a at Opera O, and um, but the point being is is that in order to get these things to work on all browsers, all browsers that support this CSS animation, we need to put in these browser specific prefixes. Now before we even do that, um, what I noticed uh, while I was making this video is that me adding my ship via uh, this before pseudo class for content isn't actually going to work in all browsers. Now here's what I, here was my thinking when I first implemented this. I didn't want to add any non-semantic markup to my HTML to get this to happen. So I figured I could just use the um, the before hook on the body to add it uh, right there before and then I'd be able to animate it. Well the problem is, or at least the one that I think it is, is that uh, because content, because bringing elements in this way doesn't actually bring them into the DOM tree, and the DOM tree is representative of all the elements you could actually affect uh, on your page, um, other browsers, um, ex with the exception of Firefox, just won't get the animation to work um, even though I tried it so the first order in order for me to get this thing to work cross browser is to reconsider how I add it to my uh, HTML um, yeah exactly right how I add it to my page so what I'm gonna do then is first order business is I'm just gonna add a, a div container at let's see right before my article. Oh, here I go. I added it just before I was trying to figure out why it wasn't working. And here's the code that I added to my HTML. I just added div ID. Uh, I said box, but let me name it ship. And then I closed it. And I didn't put anything in there except this uh, oof, this non-semantic code over here, right at the beginning of the article. So once I did that, <laughs> instead of tar targeting th all this stuff for the pseudo class before body I'm just gonna target it for ship and that's it um, now because I'm using ship I can't bring in this uh, this image with content so what I'm just gonna do is put background image instead and I'm going to have to define a width and a height for this thing. So I'll say width 120 pixels and height about 100 pixels because that's about the dimensions of that image anyway. And if I go back to my page, I should refresh it and there it is. Here's my ship and it looks pretty good. Now you notice how, uh, first off, probably more height than I really need so I can make it smaller and if you look at this little green speckle over here that's because um, the image is being repeated right so I could at least go why don't I just do a little shorthand and I'll go from background image to just background and then afterwards I'll go no repeat and I think I could even bring this guy down to about 60 about half of what it is there there we go looks good so now um, back at point A over here uh, I didn't you know I don't have to do a lot of stuff I just have to kind of uh, I'm still using the same thing I just have to use it as a ship instead now let's see if it still works in Mozilla yes cool so 
all right, that wasn't a big deal to fix that. So now let's actually make it cross-browser friendly just so it starts working in, well, we'll start with WebKit, which is going to cover Chrome and Safari. So um, the first thing that we need to do is, I th you know, it would be cool. I think it'd be way cool if I could have just copied this and like, you know, when you group together CSS elements, you put it over here and you just add WebKit, um, but that's not going to work. So what we need to do is actually copy everything we have in our keyframe over here, this whole part, and right underneath it before our ship declaration, we're just going to paste it in, and now you're going to change Mozilla to WebKit. Okay, so if nothing else at this point, all we've done is define an instance for WebKit to be aware of. Again, we haven't actually, we need to apply uh, this, uh, this other stuff over here, uh, WebKit specific. And all that's really going to require is that we copy all of, these element, all of these attributes and we replace WebKit for Mozilla. So what I'm going to do is copy it and go down here and here's a little trick that saves me time I'm gonna go to uh, TextMate I'm gonna paste this in here and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find and replace see I've already did it before I'm gonna find Mozilla and I'm gonna replace it with WebKit and actually let's go over here um, and by the way I took this outside of my document my working uh, CSS document because when you find and replace things in bulk like this there's high probability you're gonna screw something up so uh, protect yourself um, so replace all that all looks good to me so uh, I'm gonna copy this and hopefully once I paste this in here it's gonna just work beautifully in Chrome oh nice look at that so it worked but now let's look at the difference. I think uh, you notice how much choppier Firefox is than WebKit. Um, you know, actually, Web uh, Safari was one of the first browsers, or WebKit, uh, the WebKit engine was one of the first browsers to fully support this CSS animation. And overall, they just do a better job. And you could tell just by how smooth this works. Let's actually look at what it's going to how it's going to animate on Safari. Yep, seems to work nice on every on all the browsers, although Safari is not the, uh, rather Firefox doesn't seem to be doing the nicest job of it. But it works. If you're using Internet Explorer 9 like I am, and uh, you added the MS prefix over here like I did and you notice it's not working well that's because Internet Explorer 9 has yet to support uh, the CSS keyframe animation so I'm not sure if that's going to change for Explorer 9 but this is more targeting uh, this is supposed to target Internet Explorer 10 which will support the keyframe animation um, so essentially I would recommend that even if Internet Explorer at the time that you're seeing this doesn't support it I would add this anyway to kind of make it you know forward-facing and kind of anticipating um, its future support for it uh, not only that I would also add the uh, standard I guess the non-browser specific uh, uh, versions of this as well which is the same exact thing that we have here but sans the prefix so this way you kind of what we're doing here is making our animation bulletproof for browsers that support it and we could also even take that code that I have with the MS code and just paste it and take out that browser specific prefix and just put keyframes so if you look at what I'm working with over here I have my animation for Mozilla specifically for WebKit specifically for Internet Explorer 10 and 
for all browsers who are just going to implement the standard way of doing it. And that would be the best practice approach for um, implementing a technique like this. It's, you know, it'll kind of protect you. The, uh, the browser-specific prefixes are going to make sure they work on browsers today, and the ones that are a little more browser agnostic are going to make sure they continue to work tomorrow, depending on how browsers uh, feel about supporting it.